I believe that in the vast majority of these cases where the companies have fallen off the Fortune 500 list or now experienced five or six consecutive years of losing customers, it is exclusively because they had the exact same expert mindset. Like they knew what they were doing, they had it under control, and they just had to rinse and repeat. And it's not just a leadership problem, the expert mindset plagues each of us on a daily basis. It is the number one saboteur of the value that we can be creating in the world. For everybody else who was not in the 36 group, you actually just experienced the expert mindset and the traps that go along the way. You see, there are three expert mindset traps that plague each of us, both in the challenge and in our everyday work. The first once you allow this expertise, the feeling like you've got this uh, to take over, is that you become overconfident. When you become overconfident, it means that you draw out the perfect plan on paper, and obviously, it's gonna work just as well in real life as it did in your imagination. Raise your hand if you are an above average driver. Raise your hand, hold them up high. Okay, so, it's pretty, pretty accurate. Research is still holding. They're like, me. Definitely. I just want to make sure everybody sees this. Me. So research shows that 93% of the United States believes that they're an above average driver. It's pretty representative to the people in this room. Um, and of course, 43% of us are way wrong, right? Uh, and that kind of overconfidence actually affects every single thing that we do. Um, let's try an easier one. Raise your hand if you think you're pretty good at breathing. Raise your hand. Yeah? Why don't we do an experiment to find out? Everybody stand up. If the hand on your chest moved, which is the majority of the people in this room, then you are breathing wrong. Not like a little wrong, like it's a Coke or Pepsi preference, but you are breathing really wrong. And research shows that the way that you breathe actually has a significant effect on your mood, your sleep, your digestion, your nervous system, and the development of your teeth and your facial structure. In fact, in preparing for this talk, I found a research study that showed that breathing the correct way for 12 weeks had the exact same effect of taking antidepressants. That is a big difference in whether you're doing it right or wrong. And a lot of you are like, what is she talking about? Like, I really felt like I had this whole breathing thing down. And I know exactly where you sit, because I was in your position about a year ago when I found out I was breathing all wrong, and that experience is actually what set me on this journey to learn about the expert mindset. And so when we become overconfident in our skills, it means that we stop trying to improve in the real areas where we need to improve. We stop soliciting feedback in the core things that we're doing because we feel like asking for help or trying to learn something new is gonna be a demonstration that we're not the expert that we portray ourselves to be, right? So we feel like we have this and we don't try to improve it. So when we have annual meetings for our teams, we talk about all the successes that we had last year and then the roadmap of what we're gonna accomplish next year. But we never stop and say, what are we not doing well? What are the perennial problems that we haven't solved? Or how do we talk to our customers and the people that we serve to find out the equivalent of breathing the wrong way? Something that all of us are doing that is negatively impacting the experiences that people are having with you. Because you better believe that each of us has blind spots in what we do. It's just that we don't always understand them or know them, right? Breathing incorrectly was not the only thing I found out that day. So I was like, okay, okay, I got the breathing thing. Tell me how I can be funnier. She's like, oh, I got a couple of more notes on my list. She's like, is that how you walk on stage? Because it's really apologetic. I was like, okay. 
She's like, what's that weird thing that you do with your eyes? It's very confusing when I'm watching you. And I was like, oh my God, like, when did we get to the funny stuff? And each one of these comments was like one punch to the gut after the next. And I want you to think about how many times in your work you felt a punch in the gut like that, a surprising blind spot that you didn't know about in the last 12 months. My guess is probably zero. And what I want you to take away, if nothing else, from this talk today is that it doesn't mean that those blind spots don't exist. It just means that just like not knowing that you're breathing all wrong, you have no idea what they are. Let's say you take the step back and you overcome your overconfidence. The next expert trap is self-delusion. It means when you take that step back and you say, do I have any areas I need to improve? You lie to yourself and you say, no, everything is going amazing. All evidence points to the fact that I'm doing this the best that it can possibly be done. It's a huge problem because when we lie to ourselves and we only seek evidence that we're going in the right direction, it means that we spend longer working on things that aren't actually creating value for the organization. So uh, I want to do a fun demonstration with this. Everybody say hello to John. Hello, everybody. Okay, John, we're going to play a game, okay? And here's how the game works. I'm going to give you a series of numbers, three numbers, and there is a rule that all of these numbers have in common. Have you ever played this game before? No. Okay, great. So there is a rule to these numbers, and you're going to try to figure out what the rule is, okay? And the only way you can figure out the rule is by giving me another three numbers, and then I'll tell you whether they fit the rule or not. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Great. Okay, so the three numbers are two, four, and eight. Okay. Okay? So you can guess, this is for you, you can guess what you think the rule is, or you can give me another three numbers and I'll tell you whether or not they fit the rule. Okay, um, Into the microphone. Uh, 16, 32, and 64? Yes, that fits the rule. What do you think the rule is? I think the rule is, is that, um, a couple different ways, but it, it was the number... Um, not time. Hold it up closer. Sorry. The number times two is the next number. That is not the rule. Okay. Well, would you like to guess another three numbers? Wait, wait, so I got it right, but now you're asking me to do it again? Well, you got it wrong. That's not the rule. No, that's not the rule. That's not the rule. That's not so the rule. So now you want another three numbers. Well, I mean, if you want to try to figure out what the rule is. Uh, you got the rule wrong. Got the rule wrong. So do you want to guess another three numbers? All right, so uh, 128. Okay, I'm going to need a calculator for this. <laughs> I, I studied to be a lawyer so I could avoid math. Go on. So, 256. Okay. And 508? Oh, no. <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> what they said. 512. Yeah. Yes, that fits the rule. What do you think the rule is? Two to the power of X. That is not the rule. Would you like to guess another three numbers? Not really. <laughs> I'm going to make you do it one more time. Here's what just happened. So John uh, guessed what the rule was, which is a multiple of two. And I said, no, that is the wrong answer. And what was John's very next move? To guess the exact same rule, he just thought I, I was not doing the numbers high enough, right? So. He heard, yeah, that's definitely the rule, <laughs> even though I very clearly told him that it wasn't, right? And then he did it again. <laughs> How many times in our work do you encounter something that you're doing, and then there's evidence out there to be like, you know what, you are not doing this right. And you're like, no, I probably am. This is probably the best way to do it. And then somebody else out there is going to be like, you know what, this is causing a lot of problems out there in the field. And you're like, yeah, I'm just going to keep going with the thing that I was doing before, right? So what happens when we have, this is uh, 
in psychological terms called a confirmation bias. And it's the second expert trap that we fall into when we feel like we're smart and we've been successful in our job. We only look for evidence that supports what we already believe. And sometimes this can have really dangerous implications at work. Each of you is working on something that feels good and has evidence like it's working that is just creating negative value to the organization. And it is these kinds of programs that slow down the growth of an entrepreneurial organization like Allegis. And it's figuring out what those things are that can help us grow at a faster rate. With that, I'd like to welcome up to the stage expert in entrepreneurial innovation and New York Times bestselling author, Diana Kander. My name's Diana Kander, and I write and speak and train about curiosity and innovation. It's really easy to develop blind spots. As soon as you become successful, you really stop looking for what you could be doing better. So for every one of the things on your do better list, each one of us has another list of blind spots, of things that are gonna improve your work and your efforts so much more, but you don't even know what you don't know. So figuring out what your blind spots are in each one of these areas is actually gonna get you a lot further in solving that problem. It's gonna get you a lot further in reaching your crazy goal it's gonna get you a lot further in improving your relationship with your customers. I know you've watched dozens of these videos already trying to find the right person who has stage presence and rapport with the audience and they have actionable takeaways. There's things that we're doing every day that nobody's ever brought to our attention that are actually causing really bad problems between us and our customers. Well, there's one thing that I think is even more important than all of those elements. What I focus on is measurable change in my audience. What are they gonna do differently on Monday than they were doing before they ever heard the talk? If you wanna bring curiosity back into your personal life, curiosity back into your company, to make sure that your organization never peaks, never experiences that downward spiral that has affected a lot of titans of industry, then you need to master how to ask these four questions and how to properly listen to the result. Having worked with so many large companies, I can promise you, you're not gonna teach people how to be innovative in one hour, but we can teach them how to be curious. That is the catalyst for innovation. We can teach them how asking better questions is gonna get them much better results. That is the goal of our time together. <laughs>